What's going on, everybody? Big news today. Duke Johnson traded to the Houston Texans. We break that down. Everything that's involved in that trade, what happens to Cleveland's players, what happens to Houston, as well as talking about our top 10 running backs. Stay tuned. When it comes to fantasy football, I can't rely on the force, so I rely on the ultimate draft kit. From the fantasy footballers to help me prepare for my fantasy drafts. The information I glean from the UDK is beyond value. Not even the tiny green one can keep up with my draft dominance. Full projections, tier rankings, custom league scoring, and more. No one will find your lack of preparation disturbing. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com and win for the dark side. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Welcome in. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. It's me. That was, a, that was a great Vader you did before the show, Mike. Thank, um, thank you. You're so talented on so many levels. I'm a voice artist. <laughs> Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Thursday, August 8th. You know who forced their way out of some places? Duke Johnson. He did we'll with get, extreme prejudice. <laughs> yes, we will. We'll talk about that momentarily. Uh, some breaking news. Duke Johnson traded. We'll get into that with the quick question on the show today. It is a running back rankings episode. Look, I actually won. I applaud him for getting that news in right before we start recording the show. Gave us enough time to adjust him, Nick Chubb, all the players involved. Normally, these people, they wait until our show is released. It's extremely convenient. Yeah, so thank you, Cleveland. Yeah, the, yeah. the ultimate draft kit. We appreciate Already it. updated with all the teams. You got how we, we added all the NFL teams. We this added year. them all this year. We only had four teams last year. <laughs> but you got uh, how, you know how does it affect Deshaun Houston. Watson? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, no, we'll we'll talk about it. A um, couple quick reminders as we start the show. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. We just posted the beach race that took place in California. From our staff. Um, oh, man, it's good. There was a couple of things that we left out of the video. <laughs> You're welcome. First, that Brooks, while he won, and you can watch this on the YouTube channel, Brooks... Whoa, look, you're spoiling it for the people who didn't watch it. Mm. Well, no. I mean... Look, Poor form. Look, well, if no, they're not on, you, yes, if they're not on the YouTube, then, uh, then they didn't see it when it came out, and, and Brooks won. He also spent... Well, he came into the office yesterday or two days ago and said he's never been more sore in his entire life. Right, which is excellent. Makes sense. Which, yes. uh, surprisingly, you don't do beach races often, Brooks? Nah. Okay. Surprised because you dominated. And then, uh, secondly, he spent the most of that evening throwing up on the beach. So that was another highlight that I left out of the video. Worth it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like sleeping next to a bucket. Yes, but uh, no, that was really fun. You can You can check out... Uh, the YouTube channel, you can see that. Every episode's on YouTube, and we'll be posting some other fun stuff this year. Al Borland's going to be making sure our water bets get paid out and hit social media, so follow us at the FF Ballers. We make bets each and every week. Mm -hmm. um, I've never lost, so hmm. once again, another season will continue of perfect projections. Uh, Thefantasyfootballers.com is the website. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and ad-free on Stitcher Premium. And, uh, yeah, as Vader said, the ultimate draft kit available at ultimatedraftkit.com. Yes, that's Thanks. right. That's so good, Mike. Just <laughs> It's spot. I can't even tell that when you're not I look James up, Earl Jones. Exactly. I'm expecting to see James Earl Jones. It was Because weird. I am. Whoa. That's unbelievable. Guys, it's me, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> it's me. Surprise. Fool Dang. you. <laughs> all right. Quick question is, uh, look, it's all related to the implications of this trade. Duke Johnson traded from the Browns to the Texans in exchange for a 2024th round pick. Uh, Duke Johnson, this pickup by Houston, it could go really, really well for them. He's a very talented pass-catching 
running back, 4.3 career yards uh, per carry, even though he didn't have a lot of opportunities between the tackles. But Duke Johnson's an upgrade on what they had in Deonta Foreman, who they let go, and it helps Deshaun Watson. Yes. Yeah, Deshaun Watson has never had a specialist in the passing in the passing game and you you've seen the fantasy success that comes with like the Drew Brees who can get yards by dumping it off to Alvin Kamara you know part of the reason I love Cam this year is Christian McCaffrey uh, Deshaun Watson was already my number two quarterback so he didn't move up and bypass Pat Mahomes but I I do think this is great for him that being said we do not recommend in a single quarterback league to take one of those early quarterback draft picks so uh, somewhat irrelevant I mean not irrelevant and also completely irrelevant. Well, do for Deshaun. Yeah, I mean, and and the thing is, is people will make up. I mean, Twitter's a buzz trying to project what things will look like in Houston. Duke Johnson's a great pass catching running back. Not yes. not good. And last year, people said. I mean, when Cam Newton didn't throw to the running back, and Christian McCaffrey was drafted, the refrain was, "He doesn't throw to the running back. He'll never throw to the running back." Well, when you have one of the best players in the game and you acquire them, you throw them the football. So I'm not saying that Duke Johnson is going to be this prolific superstar, but they will target the running back more now that they have a great pass-catching running back. Yeah, and, and look, they, they clearly wanted him. They went and they traded for him. It's a fourth-round pick that can become a third-round pick. Uh, I mean, that that's pretty expensive to trade for a running back in today's NFL they after cutting Deonta Foreman, they knew what they needed, and they, you know, the reports came out pretty early. It's they're not going after Melvin Gordon. They want a third down back. Right. Obviously, they are wanting to get him the ball in space. But the Cleveland side is the far more interesting side. Yes. To me. But uh, real quick, by the way, Alfred Blue saw 170 touches last season. Yes. So there yeah. is there is some room for for Duke to emerge. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. Go no, on. Go on with the Chubb side. Thank you for apologizing. Um, no, yeah, so I have been pretty low on Chubb relative to expert consensus rankings out there for two reasons. One is the, the, the few touches that will be stolen in the second half of the year, and we stat these guys for the whole year by Kareem Hunt. The other side was the pass-catching work. Duke John, Nick Chubb was not a pass-catching back in college. That's not his specialty. That's not his skill set. He is a bruiser, a beast of a man between the tackles. But that has to fall on his shoulders to some degree. Dontrell Hilliard is there, and you're saying who? Maybe he's better than you think just because you don't know the name. But the point is Duke Johnson is gone, and he was the pass catching back. Hunt isn't there for eight weeks. So Nick Chubb will be involved in the passing game. It's, it's just about you know impossible for him not to get a major tick up in receptions at least for me, considering I didn't have him with very many. And to be fair to Nick Chubb, he was he was definitely serviceable, if not good, in the receiving game last year. It, uh, especially once he started, you know, once he became the full time guy, he had multiple games of three targets. He had a game of of six targets, and he's he's not. What I'm saying is he's not bad he's in not the pass bad. catching he's role. So not. if you project even just a slight uptick, let's say he gets. 15 more targets maybe even 20 more targets than he was slated to get that's a big deal for his fantasy floor it is and if you believe in the Cleveland offense if you believe they're going to move the chains maybe a similar you can think about how we thought about the Saints and their backfield and okay Kamara's got it to himself and then Ingram comes back well it's a great backfield I'm not like Chubb is in my top 10 we have a top 10 consensus rankings on today's show he didn't make it in by consensus rankings. But I'm not too scared off about Hunt's return now that Duke Johnson's gone. I think it makes it a li the safety of Nick Chubb is a little bit more secure uh, in that offense. Certainly. Uh, he is he is worthy of being a top 10 pick, especially, look, the first half of the year when Top 10 pick? Uh, top 10 running back. Okay. He is definitely worthy of being a top 10 running back in the draft because you're going to get off to a hot start here. It's week 10 before Kareem Hunt is back, and he could be – I mean, Nick Chubb could easily be a top five back through the first half of the year. If I'm undefeated I, when Kent, when Kareem Hunt comes back, I'll be very happy Yeah, because uh, I had Nick at Chubb. At that point, you're uh, you're in your playoffs. Yeah. 
So I do think this is a little bit bad. You know, obviously not drastically uh, bad, but I, I did move Baker down a little bit. Um, and ironically, as some of those targets went over to Odell Beckham and Jarvis. Say Jarvis. Yeah, Jarvis the bump. got the biggest bump uh, from me as far as taking some of that role uh, that Duke Johnson will be leaving behind. I think it's really fair to take a little bit away from Baker there because Duke is just a really good pass catching back. I took a, you know, a passing touchdown away that, that I don't know if Hilliard will pick up the slack for or Chubb will. Um, so I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Mike, or should we get into our um, main get, event here? Let's get into it. Running backs. All right, top 10 running backs on the show today are consensus half point per reception rankings. And you can see all of our rankings on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can see all of our projections for each and every player statted out over the course of the year. And you can see that in the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. The running back position, you know, you spend so much time talking about the value of taking a quarterback late. Well, one of the reasons why you do that is because you want to put yourself in a strong position at the running back um, with running backs on your roster. You play two every week. Uh, they can anchor your team, and guys get hurt. You need to stack players up. You need to build depth at this position. Uh, last year, seven of the preseason top ten running backs, according to average draft position, finished in the final top ten. Does that That's, number surprise you? No, I mean, it's, it's usually, uh, when I've been tracking things, the bust rate is around that three or uh, four guys or so. So this, this year it just bounced a little bit better. And the truth or is, last year. one of the three that finished outside was Lev Bell. So he didn't fail on the field. Right. Well, and then Kareem Hunt was one of the three right. who certainly did not fail on the field. He failed off the field. And then there's Fournette. <laughs> and he failed both on and off the that field. That is true. He was oh. like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be he's, consistent. He stuck the double. And we do have a pretty good injury history article up on the website by Matthew Betts, our injury guy. And so he talks about round one running back injuries and his, in, in, historically. So um, let's start at the top. Saquon Barkley is our consensus running back one. Jason and I have him one in our rankings. Mike, you have him at two. And I, I don't know which discussion to have on Saquon. Probably not the one about him being good or not. Uh, he's pretty good. Yes. I, I think most people want to know, is he bulletproof? Regardless of the offense this morning, I believe it was um, uh, who, Evan Silva tweeted Cody Latimer is likely the, the wide the receiver two. two to start yeah. the year. Yeah. That makes you throw up a little bit. <laughs> you know, I think this offense may struggle, but Saquon, he seems bulletproof to me. He seems bulletproof, yes, as far as is he going to be all right. The, if, if the offense is – the worst offense in the league. If they are the Arizona Cardinals, okay, maybe Saquon does bust and he's the running back 10 like David Johnson was last year, but he can't go lower than that without missing games because, I mean, perfect example, right? Odell Beckham is gone and we saw him play with Odell Beckham and without. He scored nearly five fewer fantasy points in PPR per game without Odell Beckham. So Odell Beckham being gone, that hurts him big time and yet that five fewer fantasy points a game was still over 20 points a game I mean it he was still one of the top backs he just wasn't the clear-cut weekly number one so I, I think it's kind of a, a an amalgamation where you know his upside is outlandishly high the number one overall but his floor in the worst case scenario is it's just not that low. It's it, he, right. He's not going to drop out of the top 10 running backs in fantasy. 16th best fantasy season of all time last year. Best ever by a rookie. Eighth most targets of all time for a running back. Uh, best ever for a rookie. And led the league in yards from scrimmage. Third most ever by a rookie. Yeah, it's his pass catching keeps him safe. And he is a sensational running back. I've talked about, for me, like the, if you're trying to find the one area – that might hurt Saquon Barkley. It was, I've talked about, it's his amount of huge runs, which he had a ton of them because he's a great running back. What was interesting is great friend of the show, Scott Barrett, put out an article, and on carries where Barkley didn't bust off a 20-yard run, so you, just the, the other 
regular carries, he averaged 2.72 yards per carry, which is the lowest, the worst of 256 qualifying seasons. It's nice to break a lot of long runs. When you when you qualify that and and you said that's the worst of those seasons, are you talking about that specific stat? Are you yes. talking about that's the worst? Yes, compared I'm, to others of runs under 20 yards. Um, yes, it, it, it's a pro football focus metric they're talking about. I just it, that was it blew my mind to see it actually out in a statistical fashion instead of just knowing how awesome he was with these huge runs. So I, my my point simply is that's like I have him at two because I see a regression coming for the big plays. He'll still have a ton of them, probably the most at the running back position. But if he doesn't hit him as consistent as he did last year, then he's just I, he's the number two I, guy. For I me. do agree that he has a worse season this season than he had last season. But the whole bulletproof analogy, it's like you got your vest on and you get you're getting shot a lot and it's gonna hurt. <laughs> you can break ribs, but you're gonna come out alive. He you catches know, just too many passes for I will say this, there to be a problem. Small sample size, but he has never finished as in the top 24 running backs in week 15 in his career. Mm. So there is that. Watch out. Week Championship. 15, week, yeah. week 15, that's an important week. I think, <laughs> Andy, you experienced that last year. So just, you know, put that in your – Don't tuck it remind away. me. I hate Saquon. He's no good. Um, number two is Christian McCaffrey. Jason and I have him at three. Mike has him at one. Uh, I was going to add, like, I when you look at the things, you know, again, splitting hairs at the top ten of the position. Certainly. We, we did top ten wide receivers a couple episodes ago. You're just finding differentiation between great players – Everybody's got those f top four in a different order. I would rather lean on the volume of Saquon than looking to Christian McCaffrey to catch over 100 passes again. I think Saquon should approach 300 carries on the ground, whereas I think McCaffrey's going to be in that 220 category. Uh, predictability of you know record-breaking pass-catching years year to year I think is a little bit lower, and that's why I go with Saquon over McCaffrey, but... No one can blame Mike for loving McCaffrey. He's his number one overall. Last year, 219 carries, 1,100 yards, seven touchdowns, 107 receptions, and he never busted for a fantasy owner. He was as reliable as they get. 100% of his games qualified as good, 47% great games. We talked about it a little bit last week. The back half of the year, nobody's sure that Cam Newton could throw the ball uh, beyond a certain distance after a while. Right. Definitely helped McCaffrey. Do you believe that the team will reduce the snap count and workload for McCaffrey at all? That's the that's their narrative that they're putting out there is that we want to use him as much, but we don't want him on the field as much. What I do you think? I don't think they're going to limit his usage. While he might not have the volume of a Zeke or a Saquon, he does have enough volume to be very safe. Uh, Norv Turner won't be able to get out of his way Christian McCaffrey will be on the field now uh, you know there's a couple things that I think come down from last year right uh, obviously his rookie year he's in the middle threes on his yard per carry goes up to five both of those seem like probably the low and the high for him so sure. he'll, he'll probably meet in the middle and then the pass catching look he is I think the best pass catching I would running agree. back in football He's outstanding. They're going to hyper-target him. He'll have over 100 targets. But the difference between what happened with the Cam shoulder injury, some of the other injuries to other players like Greg Olson, what you saw in the first half of the year was a guy on pace for 116 targets, which is amazing and outstanding, and you love it. And the second half of the year, he was on pace for 132 targets, which is just outlandish. Sure, but I would I would go against that by saying 116 targets is actually eight fewer than he received on the season. Like that that was basically what he ended up with. 116 124 targets last year. If he was on 116 pace, there's not a large difference. To me, the difference uh, and his rookie year 113 targets. So the difference to me is Cam Newton. We you you briefly mentioned at the top the narrative of Cam doesn't throw to the running back. Well, Christian McCaffrey's rookie year, you saw growing pains of Chris, of Cam Newton targeting the running back where you saw some throws that are should be an easy throw where Cam Newton was way off the mark. I think he's just gotten better at those touch passes to the running back position because there's not a huge target discrepancy between 
Christian McCaffrey's rookie and sophomore years. It's just the catch percentage. What about the maturation of Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, and then the return of Greg Olson? Do you think that that can impact the involvement of McCaffrey in the game? I, the Greg Olson returning, no, not at all. Uh, it, to me, it just increases the scoring opportunities for Christian McCaffrey. Sure, he, cause sure. he, to me, he's still going to be over 100 targets at at his floor. So you in seven rushing touchdowns. Maybe he that that bumps up because Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore take the take the mantle. This is going to be the best offense that Cam Newton has ever been able to work with. I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, for sure. I love Curtis so, Samuel. Love DJ Moore. So once again, we're splitting hairs. Yeah, but, but that's why I prefer Christian McCaffrey at number one. All right. Uh, before we jump into number three on our running back rankings, I want to thank NFL Game Pass. What a perfect time to thank them too. Oh. Today is the. Preseason week one. Uh, I mean, <laughs> believe you mean the debut of uh, Kyler Murray. Woo-hoo. What, you guys are going to watch tonight? You're darn right I'm going to watch. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm jacked up to see all the rookies, not just Kyler, how, how the running backs perform. Does DK Metcalf get on the field and, like, uh, monstar some people? I'm excited for the preseason, and you can get your first look at all the rookies, all the new players on the new teams. I mean – if you get NFL Game Pass, your season starts today, literally today. Um, I'm I'm super jacked up. They got a great deal for you, so you can make sure you see everything that happens tonight and through the weekend. You can kick off the 2019 NFL season with a seven-day free trial when you sign up now at NFL.com slash fantasy footballers. That is a very easy URL to remember, NFL.com slash fantasy footballers for a free seven-day – seven-day trial of NFL Game Pass. And hey, Footland, look, I know a lot of you, what you're thinking. You're like, wait, Jason, is he getting his swole on? Yeah. I've been working you with a are, personal man. trainer, working hard, and it's time to demand more, Footland, from our workout gear. That's where No Bowl comes in. They are a footwear, apparel, and accessory brand for people who train hard and don't believe in excuses. No Bull. You know what I'm saying? And don't let the simple design fool, fool you because their gear is built to perform, made with extremely durable, breathable, abrasion-resistant material that moves with you. It's the most comfortable apparel for the most uncomfortable training. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's multi-environment design. It, it's just it's built to last. It's built to be durable for people who don't want excuses, who want to train hard. If you're ready to challenge your gear the way that you challenge yourself, go to Noble Project dot com slash footballers today for people who put in the work day after day noblproject.com that's n-o-b-u-l-l-p-r-o-j-e-c-t dot com slash footballers all right we're moving on number three if you haven't figured it out he's invincible it's alvin camara it's a me <laughs> super camario himself Comes in at number three on our consensus rankings. It was a beautiful year for Alvin Kamara. It is a beautiful thing to be a running back on the New Orleans Saints. A report from Sean Payton today expects Alvin Kamara to be the same old Alvin Kamara in the same old role, and that led to just under 200 carries, 883 yards, and 14 touched f- 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 four, four, 14 touchdowns on the ground. 81 receptions, 709. I thought you were rebooting over there. <laughs> I, It's just shocking when you see 194 <laughs> carries and 14 touchdowns. Sustainable? Yep. I, probably. You know, probably in this probably offense. In the Saints offense. It's one of those things where last year the the narrative, even though I was a huge Camara fan and believe we're both coming out of college and then obviously – what he did his rookie year was outstanding, but last off season there was a lot of questions, right? When you want the talent versus the opportunity, I'm always going to lean the opportunity side because you know, assuming that talent and opportunity are equal parts in the equation, uh, I want the volume. And last season it was it, there were worries about Alvin Kamara because do you really want to draft a top end pick who's not going to get 200 carries at the running back position? And the answer now is yes, because the the talent and opportunity are not equal. The talent of Alvin Kamara is special, and the opportunity has might not be in volume, but it is in offense, because 
Sean Payton knows what he's doing. When they get around the goal line, it's Kamara's world. That's part of why Drew Brees has you know, started to dip down into fantasy streamingville versus just weekly top three fantasy player. Uh, Alvin Kamara, you can make the argument, should be the number one draft pick just based on the fact that while his workload will stay near the same, I still think it bumps up having the backup go from Mark Ingram to Latavius Murray. The thing about Kamara is that every touch he has is more valuable than any touch any other running back has, including the top four. Over the last two years, both McCaffrey and Barkley, who have been – they're in the top five in this category. Yards from scrimmage per touch was 5.8 for each player. When Kamara touches the ball, it's 6.6 yards per touch, and that's over a two-year span. That's better than anybody in football, better than Gurley, better than Cohen, better than McCaffrey and Barkley. So they're more valuable touches – so you're right. It's it's more. Are you a, are you talented? Are you in an incredible offense? He'll probably get fewer rushing attempts than Christian McCaffrey. He'll probably have fewer total receptions than Christian McCaffrey. Do do we disagree about that? Uh, I no. think that's correct. He'll have, but he will have more scoring opportunities. It, we were joking about the 14 touchdowns. It that certainly could come down, and that's the, the only differentiator to me for Alvin Kamara versus these guys. Is it 11? Or is it something crazy like 14? And the, that will be the separator to me. Could, fifth most receiving yards last year, 81 receptions, fourth at the running back position. Extremely elusive, broke 27 tackles. That's fourth at the running back position. So he's fantastic. He also fantastic. has the number one ranked offensive line in football, according to the huddle heading into the new year. Not something you could say about the Giants, although I think their line will improve, but it has three new starters on it. So Kamara has the advantage of this uh, – you know, a quarterback that keeps people honest, involved in the passing game. I do think that if Peyton's coming out and saying he's going to play the same role, that validates our value glance at Latavius Murray. Does it not? Yeah. Because there's I mean, a role carved out for Latavius, and it's not Kamara's role, and Kamara's role is not that role. Yeah, certainly. I mean, Latavius Murray is going to be in the Mark Ingram role, which has always been – good for fantasy over the last couple of years, certainly for where he's being drafted. But Kamara is the guy, and if Latavius Murray is a little bit less effective than Ingram, then Kamara will get a few more touches in a game. And whenever he gets a few more touches, I mean, you saw that when Ingram was out first four weeks last year. It, it Not only was Alvin Kamara the number one running back over those first four weeks, but he was the number one running back three of those first four weeks. He was dominant. He was on another level. He can certainly do that. All right, let's talk about Zeke. Ezekiel Elliott, Cowboys running back extraordinaire. Mike we, and Jason both, maybe. both have him at four. I got him at two still. Um, last year in 15 games, 304 carries. 77 receptions. I want, I want Zeke so bad. Like he's my number one. <laughs> I want Brooks. Can Whoa. we can we please get Somebody. that specific soundbite carved out for he social is media? Thirsty. I'm just telling. Like like settle down. Look. Woo. Think about all the arguments we've been making. Saquon. Oh. oh, oh. Kitty Elliot here. Yeah. <laughs> look look Saquon. Has the talent and the volume, but he's on a bad team. Kamara has the talent, but he doesn't get the volume. Christian McCaffrey, you know, it's like, but Zeke has all of it because he's finally a pass catcher. Last year, after Amari Cooper got there, he was basically pacing with Christian McCaffrey and targets, which is incredible. And I think Zeke is just the way that I said Christian McCaffrey is the best pass catching running back. I think Zeke is the best pure running back in the NFL. It all comes together. I was so excited to make him my 101. He's easily, I think, the best pick in fantasy if he plays 16 games. <laughs> just, just get on the field and play football. Now, I mean, that's a lot of work. 381 <laughs> touches last year. Do you, I mean, the team is raving about Tony Pollard. Dak is raving about him. Is there a chance that if he's on the field, Pollard steals some of that illustrious target total? It's funny because you said Zeke's a pass catcher now, and to me that felt like a like an upgrade in a video game that you don't get to take away, but you can take it away. I mean, yeah. you can take away what he did last year if you want to get keep him off the field or, or whatever the case may be. So maybe talk to me a little bit about that fear and then a little bit about whether you actually expect him there on week one. Go ahead, Jay. So the fear of Tony Pollard, I, I, I think that they're going to 
use him, you know, in more of that Tavon Austin role. And obviously, Tony Pollard will be very involved if Zeke isn't out there. I still fully expect Zeke to be there week one right now. I did move him down to number four because last year was a great indication. No matter what you think is going to happen, until a player is there, they're not. And so you have to treat him astute. as it, – It's incredible so insight. Astute. Deep wisdom from Jack Handy. And – the, the reality is, uh, you know, the, it, these things can blow up quickly. I mean, it, for the worse. That's what happened with Lev Bell. A report came out where the teammates were talking trash, and then Lev Bell's feelings got hurt, and it was like, okay, I'm, I'm not coming in. And it was like, and, and, and the whole thing blew up. And I think Zeke has shown tendencies that, that could mirror that. So I, I The I, target I, I jump was were. crazy. Yes. The target jump yes. was 38. 39 95 yes. yes yes and not just 95 because if you if you realize what happened when you know they had their bye week they That's changed the their offense and and Amari Cooper came he was on 123 target pace which is I don't expect no, that No I I don't either and just and gets and, you more hot and bothered it just gets me more hot and bothered. That's exactly <laughs> right. To your to your point Andy Tony Pollard does have pass catching in his college production profile. I mean, he, last year he was he was teammates with Daryl Henderson, and he put up 39 receptions to Henderson. That's a, 19. That's a lot in that college. Is a that is whole a lot. lot. Six foot, um, 215. A lot of hype out of camp. Then again, I mean, it would. If I were Jerry Jones, I'd be putting all the hype on Tony yes. Pollard out at that I could. Well, but they say, you know, the, the most exciting player at camp. Yeah, of course. But then here's here's what you need to, the the context, right? Let's say Zeke is back week one. It's probably on the back of a whole lot of money. No, you're right. And yeah. they're going to be like, okay, get him back yeah. out there. And like, the, the team is just better. If Zeke can do everything and you don't know what what's going to happen, and you bring Pollard out, you go, oh, well, they're going to pass the ball. And here's, here is a uh, an area of positive regression for Zeke. Should the pass catching come down? Last year, he, he averaged a touchdown every 50 attempts. 50. You average out his first two years. It was every 38 attempts. That's no a, and I believe in their offense. We talked about yes. this yesterday on the show, right? Kellen Moore, they were a bottom uh, third offense last year. Yeah, and his if his rookie year it was every 21 and a half attempts per touchdown. I don't think he can get to that level, but you get down to that 38 mark, that's a that's a huge amount of touchdowns for a guy, uh, uh, an increase of touchdowns yeah. for a player who should carry the ball over 300 times. And they're getting Travis Frederick back, one of the best, right. if not the best center in the NFL right now. I mean, we don't know how he'll be coming back off of you know his. Do they have a, another lineman banged up right now, Brooks? Zach Martin Zach was Martin? hurt, yes. but okay. I don't, I don't know the exact. Yeah. Why don't you look at that, Brooks? I think he's okay. But yeah, I'll, I believe I'll he was. Double fun. check that. Um, David Johnson comes in at number five. I have him at six. Jason and Mike have him at five. Zach Martin doesn't expect to miss much time. Uh, last year, David Johnson. I asked on the live show, I asked fantasy owners to forgive him because Mike McCoy, what he did to David Johnson Criminal. was uh, inhumane. You guys remember uh, the back in the, the early 90s, we had the FBI's Most Wanted. We had that TV show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. certainly. Yeah, Mike McCoy earned a number 10 spot. On that list? Yes. It wasn't good. I mean, it was bad. They, they ran him right up the middle. They didn't target him. He was the number one pass catcher in football two years ago. People need to forgive him, but the burns are real with David Johnson. I believe that this year, at a minimum, the pace of play yes. change will afford David Johnson more opportunities, and more opportunities is all he needs. Last year, just 50 receptions. That number can't stay the same for, to validate a top-five finish. But I don't think it will. He's just too valuable in the passing game. Right now, it feels a lot around Cardinal camp. It feels like it's you know, Kyler's going to throw it to Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk and blank. I mean, it's not. There's not another guy emerging, and the guys that are there to emerge are rookies. David Johnson's going to be used in the passing game, and this offense is going to run more plays at a minimum, even if they're not the best team on, in in the league at doing so. Yeah, I, I don't expect him to go back to the days of the 2016 touchdown totals where the Cardinals were yeah. one of the highest scoring teams in the NFL. They still have a rookie quarterback. You have to keep that in mind. 
no matter how excited you are at the prospects of Kyler and his fantasy goodness with rushing, I don't think he is going to be that, you know, running back one overall due to touchdowns. But the sheer pace, the sheer number of plays run last year versus this year, last year where he was the running back 10, there will be an increase and it's going to be so much more creative in space. David Johnson was a wide receiver in college that converted to running back. That's why he's so good at it. They will utilize that. You know that from Cliff Kingsbury in college. He always targeted the halfback. He was, I, I believe, top five in all of college football at that during his time. So it, it it's a perfect marriage, and I think he deserves to be at the number five spot. There's no question to me after the top four. That's where the break is, right? Those top four guys are unbelievable. You're, you're at the five spot. To me, it's, it's clearly David Johnson. All right, number six is Todd Gurley. That's where – That's you, my fault. No, but that's where you would go at five, right? Correct. Yeah, I, Todd Gurley, I have him at five. Jason, you have him at eight. Mike at seven. But, but, he, but voice Andy, of public opinion. Have you heard that Todd Gurley's got a pretty bad knee injury? What? Yeah. Oh, no, I'll move him. I'll move him down. It's not actually an injury. It's a <clears throat> condition. Condition. Thank you. I believe, look, talk out of camp is that Gurley looks explosive. Efficiency will not be a problem for the running back in the Los Angeles Rams offense. Correct. <clears throat> so Gurley does not have to uh, put up the kind of volume numbers that you're going to get from Saquon Barkley for him to still be in that Camara type of category. I'm warming on Todd Gurley. You cannot say a thing about him without acknowledging openly the risk. You know how you have to sign a waiver? I feel like when you draft Gurley as a fantasy owner, they need to bring out a waiver for you to sign saying, I acknowledge that at any moment in time, Todd Gurley may disappear due to uh, unforeseen swelling. I may be in a bad mood after that. Whatever is, needs to be on the waiver, you've got to sign that when you draft him. But the thing is, is right now, in a lot of drafts, he's slipping into the second round. So um, if you're at the turn and you can grab a top tier, if you can go Julio Jones, Todd Gurley to start your draft, which people can do right now, I just I, I, the risk is worth the reward to me to secure a guy that as long as he's healthy to me is a top 10 when, running, running when back it, when he's, it comes to touchdowns Todd Gurley has not been good he's been otherworldly so since McVay's been there the last two years his 16 game pace average taking both years in do you know his 16 game pace total touchdown numbers 23 so yeah Alvin Kamara got 14 rushing and you're like uh, but, but he doesn't have enough volume in this offense it is very feasible that Todd Gurley can get 14 rushing touchdowns instead of his 17 he had last year. <laughs> he could, add a he few. could take every other game off yeah, and still a, hit 14. It's, so it, it's one of those where <clears throat> I think Todd Gurley, when he's out there, is going to be a top five back. I do believe that. I don't think he's going to drop down to being a terrible back. The reason that I'm more down on him is the risk of, okay, he's, he's killing it. He's crushing it. Week one, week two looks great. The knee swells after practice. Now they need to give him time off. Now they need to rest him. We just we saw that last year. They've been babying him so much. We're not going to see him in preseason. So, look, it could all be smoke. It could all be, uh, you know, for nothing, and he is fine. But the roster moves that the Rams have made, bringing in uh, Daryl Henderson, Darnell Anderson, and, uh, you know, and Malcolm bringing Brown. bringing back Malcolm Brown. Who's the actual backup. Yes. Um, say that. They ha they're they concerned enough to say we need a backup plan at the least, if not uh, an every game Batman and Robin plan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's massive risk there. Number seven, Le'Veon Bell. Um, Lev Bell, question marks, changing teams, returning from uh, a year off, a year just to reflect and to think about things. Um, <laughs> is he going to look good in green? Is the question that people have? And well, yes, I've seen it. He's a great color. Got the him. new. What do you think of the new Jets um, I, uniforms? No, I'm I'm all about it. You like them? Yeah. I'm I'm undecided. When I first saw them, I was like, eh, they just kind of were plain. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, they certainly are. But I don't know. That doesn't bother me that they're plain. They just made me. You they're know, you, clean. They are clean. Yeah, the problem is it didn't hot and bother me, Mike, and I want to be hot and bothered by these <laughs> uniforms. Yes, like Zeke. I just want the NFL to bring back the Kelly Green Philadelphia Eagles. That's yes. all I want. That's all I want in this life. It's, That's it. It's a noble goal. Like, I would aim a little higher, <laughs> but live your life. 
Um, the last time we saw Lev Bell, he was okay. 321 carries for 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns. 85 receptions for 655 yards and two touchdowns. I do believe in the dark horse New York Jets. I do. I believe in Sam Darnold's uh, progression and evolution. Um, I say whatever you want about Adam Gaze. Okay. Uh, which you many, did, many which, things can which be said. You, which you will. Uh, mismanagement of running backs, things like that. But this team, they can't be more committed to two players than they are with Sam Darnold and Le'Veon Bell. This is this is their team. This is their win now team in a division that has win now possibilities. Uh, so I do believe that this team progresses as an offense. I believe Sam Darnold gives you some very elite games, and I understand that having a top notch, top five pass catching running back, it helps a quarterback out too. So you know we've talked a lot about Lev Bell. I understand that there are worries and concern. When you spend a top 10 pick on a running back, you want variables like swelling knees and changing teams and body surfing running styles to be maybe uh, not there. And you want top offenses as well in a strong offensive line. <clears throat> and it's hard to project those for the Jets. I, I, I don't mind believing in them as, as a team that really could break out beyond expectations, but... As of right now, Pro Football Focus is projecting their offensive line to start the season at number 28, something that Le'Veon Bell has never, ever dealt with is a bad offensive line. We'll see how his style can match with that. Remember how Gurley was add, with his bad offensive line? Right. They did add, um, They added what, Matt Khalil? And then they also traded for Ravens uh, O-lineman Alex Lewis. So it is in full rebuild mode. Now, whether that's a result of being in camp and going, holy crap, right. I got to do something. But also, we it, it's still good. It's still good. They did something. Yeah. Pace yeah. of play is also a huge deal. Adam Gase, two out of three years as the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, was dead last, and not by just a normal fractional margin. In 2018, he was last by one and a half plays per game. Which is and impressive because the Cardinals a, still existed. Yes. Do you remember him coming out and talking about that? Yes, he wanted to run. <laughs> yes. Do you remember that he? Ba they basically said, "Look, you're 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 kind of known as supposed to be this offensive guru that produces like a fast pace of play." And oh, and he 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 came out. He was talking about how many plays he wanted to run a game, which was like a number that would lead the league. But he just it just didn't materialize. Mm. They had to do what they had to do to be seven and nine. And I feel like I have to be. An intervening meat shield here for my compadre Jason, who we we recently were on the Rich Eisen show, and Jason brought up the name Ty Montgomery, to which Rich Eisen was oh. not very pleased about. But head coach Adam Gase talks a lot about Ty Montgomery. Whether or not that is just coach speak and fluff. That remains to be seen, but it is that hype from the head coach is happening. I forget. Did they sign Ty Montgomery before or after Love Bell? I you, think do, you don't really forget. No, I really forgot, but I, <laughs> I, that's why I said it. I believe they signed him after, but I, th to me that makes a little bit of a difference. Like If you go out and sign you know, Mike Davis, and then you don't know if you can get David right. Montgomery, and David Montgomery comes, okay, goodbye Mike Davis. But if you sign Love Bell... And then you're like, ooh, you know what this team could really use for what I want to do? I'm going to go also sign Ty Montgomery. Then that's saying I would expect him to be used at that point. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, lot of investment in Lev. We'll see what happens. You have red flags around the situation, but upside because of the fact that Lev Bell's dropping uh, further down in drafts than where he's been in previous years, but... Yes. Really, he's starting to – with Melvin Gordon and the Zeke situation, he's starting to creep up to uncomfortable levels. Well, look, I, I've been um, – you know, when we were on the Eisen show, he was one of the bust candidates I brought out, yet I am the highest of the three of us. I was going to say I'm at 10, Mike at 8, Jason 7. I've got him up at 7 because I do think the volume will be there. I think the talent is there, but uh, some of the concerns you voiced, his running style behind a bad offensive line, uh, the fact that there will be fewer plays, and I fully expect him to have a smaller – percentage market share even even though he'll, he'll lead by right. a wide margin over the other running backs smaller than what it was for Mike Tomlin out of a smaller piece of pie so it's just you're losing a lot of touches and each one becomes a little bit less efficient there's still so much going around I think he'll be a top 10 back but I'm not excited like Lev Bell 
is one of those where if he's my running back one, if that's who I grab in the first round, I'm kind of disappointed. It's his, his range of outcomes. Like Le'Veon Bell certainly could be in the top five, but I also see a world where Le'Veon Bell is the running back 14, running back 15. That That's why it, it's uncomfortable to draft him where he's he's being taken. All right, how comfortable are you here, Mike? Number eight, Damian Williams. Current average draft position of RB12. We have him ranked at we have him ranked at RB8 by our consensus rankings. In his three weeks as a starter for Kansas City, sorry, four weeks, he averaged 19.6 fantasy points per game and half PPR. Do you know what Kareem Hunt averaged while he was playing? No, Williams, I'm guessing it's in the 19 category. 19.7. Yeah, I mean, this is the best offense in football. So more. Got it. <laughs> yes. Kareem Hunt averaged the, way more. The Kenny Galladay split more. Point one. Well, my my concern for Damian Williams is not and it, and mind you, I have him at eight. Somehow I'm the highest on Damian Williams. And I love it. And it, it I signed feels and it like fueled I my soul. Ate something bad. I mean, I we're mean, all eight eight or nine, so <laughs> yes. I know, but Mike was really excited about the fact that I had him a spot higher. My my only concern for Damian Williams is his lack of tenured status in the NFL. His, Which is very fair and it's, talent. It's just... Uh, Get out of here with that nonsense. Look, Jason can be right. Mike, you should just say that he sucks, but that a sucky player will score 19.6 fantasy points a game. Right. That's, you could go with that route. The thing is, is talent or not, if he's on the field as the one in the Kansas City offense, I like him at eight. He's great. If he's not, if he's banged up, now he just returned to practice. If he's off Hallelujah. the field. If he's not... <laughs> look, if he gets banged up, they're not, they're not forcing themselves to put him back at the top of the depth chart is my point. That's fair. That being said, Carlos Hyde grabbing a stranglehold at the top is not likely. Daryl Williams grabbing, and believe it or not, that's a real player this time, um, is not you know likely to grab a stranglehold because Williams does more things in a mediocre fashion than they do. They might be good at one or two things. Williams is secure as a top-tier guy in one of the best offenses in football as long as he's healthy. I hate the <laughs> yes. Bengals. No, I, I just yes. I hate so much the Bengals for taking <laughs> a fourth running back in Rodney Anderson. He would have dropped right in the last. I love that you're committed to this take. I'm so committed because, he, oh, it would have been so good. Like I've, I've checked my, my sources on the Rodney Anderson to Chiefs hype. All that comes up is Jason Moore. Ooh. That's just because there's so much. Uh, look, Damian Williams, Andy, you laid it out great. When he's on the field, he's going to be fantastic. I, I besmirched his name regularly last season, but as soon as he became the starter, I was the highest ranked on him. Said you, Look, he's got to be played. He's Andy Reid's one, so when he's there, he's great, but he carries risk because, you know, kind of like Tyrod Taylor last year in the sense that there's reason where if he if he gets injured he might not he might not just get his job back and that's Damian Williams if Damian Williams gets injured and Daryl Williams gets the shot or anybody gets the shot and all of a sudden here's the thing whoever gets the shot you want to know what they're gonna do succeed that's my belief I think in this offense you throw an NFL caliber player out there and they're gonna be pretty darn good and so then it's like okay now he comes back do you just do you just shift do you just throw him back in the mix so that that is the worry but if he plays 16, if you knew he played 16, I it, mean, top five be is – top five. Yeah. It, it, he – what's nice about him having at least some security at his job, he is, in my opinion, by far the best pass-catching running back on the team. Even if Carlos Hyde – if Damian Williams misses some time, Carlos Hyde is showing well on the ground. We've seen enough of Carlos Hyde as a, as a professional football player to know that pass-catching is not his strength it's not going to become his strength. So Damian Williams, if things go r really wrong for him, he would still come back into that role. Yes, which is worst. valuable. Yes. I, am I allowed to break old news? Y you certainly can, but I don't have any drops for you. Old oh. news. All right. Well, I will. Dun, well, Damian, dun, 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 dun. Damian Tomlinson leads league <laughs> in fantasy scoring. Ty Montgomery was signed one month after they signed Le'Veon Bell. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Brooks. Yeah. Now, um, was that pre or post Gaze? That, was, that would that have was been post Gaze, Gaze right? because yes. Gaze didn't want to sign yes. Love Bell. Okay. Um, by the way, the deal, the Duke Johnson trade, I don't know if you saw this, it was between Dorsey in Cleveland and Bill O'Brien because they don't have the GM right. in Houston. So it was a phone call between those two guys. Ian Rappaport uh, reported that. Sometimes you just got to pick up a phone. 
Yeah, I mean, Dorsey probably just didn't want to deal with, with Duke anymore. All right, Dalvin Cook at number nine, James Conner at number 10. I'm going to bring them up together because Dalvin, uh, Jason and I are very bullish on at seven and six, Mike at 14. Mike hates him. Connor. It's just where he ended up, man. I don't hate Connor him Connor is Mike's number six running back, and Jason and I have him at 11 and 12. So uh, kind of a difference of opinion between these two players. Um, Mike, talk to me about why, I don't know, who's more accountable for their take? The guys at six and seven with Cook probably more than the, the 14. That is that is fair. That's fair that like even though we're together, we probably have the hotter take than Mike having him down at running back 14 considering he's never finished a season higher at, than 29. Right, exactly. So not by not because of talent. Yeah, and that that's really Yeah, it. I, I think it's just I, I think there's guaranteed he's a guaranteed bell cow in the NFL. Interesting. Yes, he is. I mean, he's 100% guaranteed to be the the guy in Minnesota and and that's what I like. I'm not going to factor in potential injury you know he had one catastrophic injury and he was banged up last year um i'm not ready to, to declare him an injury prone player for the duration of his career a lot of players have started that way before so um there you go i mean he he's going to catch the ball in the offense he's going to get goal line opportunities that's what i believe jason why do you like him well i mean because when when he's been out there he's been a great back for fantasy he's well rounded he's going to be goal line he's going to be a pass catching back he's on a good offense there's really nothing not to like here if you look when he got back from his injury the last 5 weeks of the season he was the running back 6 i mean it was it was insanely derrick henry <laughs> during that time yeah it, well and then christian mccaffrey saquon and a Damian lot of it Williams, was the miami game no, that's that's not even. I mean, sure, a yes, lot of it's it. True. A lot of it was the Miami game. A lot of it was the Miami game, but he he never had a bad game. He was always an RB two or better. Running here's his ranks: twenty four, running back one. The next week, running back one. So those can't be both the Miami game. Then the running back twelve. Then the running back twenty one. I mean, he was just really good. And and so the worry is, the worry is one hundred percent. Can he hold up? Because he got injured in college. He's been injured in the NFL. I mean, he should have the same worries to me that Leonard Fournette has. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I I love Cook if he's on the field. I'm scared of where I have him ranked. So he missed um, four games last season and was on five injury reports for the hamstring strain. And that happened in week two. Uh, the year before was the week four injury, the ACL reconstruction. Mike, you said that's kind of where he landed. Correct. So... Um, Talk to me about why he didn't end up in a higher position. I mean, do you not believe in the fact that he can be a bell cow in this offense? I, I don't, and I, I think it would be a mistake for Minnesota to try and force that. He, I have him with 225 carries and 58 receptions, so it it was uh, – That's a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it just – I just happen to have running backs that I like slightly more. This isn't a major gap in points – at all. So, re look, remember how good Derrick Henry was? Do you remember he was yes. unbelievable? Yeah. Those finishes I just were spouting off, those were Derrick Henry's. <laughs> so he's really good. And and both of those weren't the Miami game. So, you so I was me, right. Both of those me. were the Miami game. Dalvin but, Cook didn't put up Derrick Henry's numbers? He didn't put up Derrick Henry's numbers. But, look, listen, they're... <laughs> They're right next to each other in my in my page I was reading, and they are still good. Here, Jason, people trust us. I, well, that's why I'm bringing this up. People trust us. I don't want if I say the wrong info, I want to call myself out. Oh, look, here's Dalvin Cook's finishes. Still great. Still had only one game where he wasn't a top twenty four running back. Okay, he was 18, 14, 9, 3, 24. Those those were the weeks that I mean. Wait, it, read those again. 18, 14, 9, 3, 24. Right, no, I mean it, those are still really those good. are those are great numbers, but that those type of numbers aren't getting you anywhere close to number six on the season. If you did that every week, I think you would be. Top. I I disagree. Really, never yeah. finishing below twenty four. That's top, all to green. put you in the top six. It would. I don't think it would happen. It would certainly put you in the Frank Gore category of fin fantasy finishes on the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, which <laughs> oh, but we have yeah. ranked. We got him ranked oh, at nine. So so good. Um. I, I think it's going to be a very <laughs> prolific year for Dalvin Cook. He's one of my favorites heading into the season. He's a he would have been a my guy candidate. So, so why isn't Derrick Henry in our top ten? 
I mean, remember those back to back number one weeks? Yes, I do we were, remember. We were all talking about. I do recall. Um, well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you read consistency charts out, Jay, mm-hmm. you say like running back one week, and so that's why I thought maybe you meant like. Not right. the RB1, he but like an RB1. an RB1, which he had a nice finish to the oh, season. I, sh- I should have done that. That would oh have sounded goodness. better. RB2, RB2, RB1, RB1, RB2. Great job, Dalvin. <laughs> All right, James Conner. Mike has James Conner as one of his official my guys. We've talked a lot about him. Mike, you've made the case um, yeah, if, if you multiple want, times. If you want the full extended, because I can't imagine we'll – I need to, we need to do it again. If you want the full James Conner take, it's on Monday's show. Yeah. And so what I'll bring up then is there have been some reports of uh, camp hype around Jalen Samuels being used in the passing game, both at running back and wide receiver, former tight end. Um, how, how, how could it go wrong? for? That's a question for you because you've been very bullish on him. You have him at six. Sure. How can it go wrong for James Conner in 2019? That Big Ben sucks because Antonio Brown is gone. I would throw another one in there that he loses the pass catching work that has made Lev Bell and James Conner so valuable for fantasy. That that's my fear. He could, but he was a better pass catcher than Jalen Samuels last year. Uh, look, uh, he's talented at it. I mean, I think if if they give him that role, Tomlin always has been a one back guy. I believe they will give him that role. Third in yards after the catch he'll at suc- the running back position. Yeah, he'll succeed at it. The question is just because of what the reports have been, because of what happened when Connor came back from his injury after Jalen Samuels had kind of broken out in his stead, and then they did involve him in the passing game more, and you saw Connor, who was, you know, Connor didn't disappear, but he didn't have those huge target numbers the way that he had early in the season, the way that Love Bell always yeah, had. Yeah, I mean. That's my worry. He was the RB15 from weeks 9 through 17. That's more of the category that I believe his his true output will will fit in. He, you talk about range of outcomes with Lev Bell. I believe that there is a wide range of outcomes for James Conner as That's well, fair. because they were a prolific scoring team. They were, he was twenty third in points in that span, um, so you saw a little bit less, and, and there were some injury games and things like that. But y- you definitely didn't see what you saw in the first eight weeks over the last half of the season. I mean, in the first eight weeks, week one he had thirty one fantasy points. Week five, thirty. Three, week eight, 35. I mean, those were monstrous weeks that really defined his season. He's a great, he has a great opportunity. I'm less confident in the Steelers as a whole. That's why I have him down a little bit more. I, I want to talk about the Steelers as a whole because I'm, I'm realizing, I'm, I'm starting to think like that we need to find some bet between you and I um, and, and that I don't know where Mike stands. How do you view the Steelers as a team? Do you think they're going to be a good team this year or they're going yes. to regress without Antonio Brown? I, uh, they won't. There might be a slight regression, but I believe that they are still one of the better offenses. Like in the win count, what you know? Just I, I'm just curious because I know Andy, you've talked a lot about you. You believe they're going to take a step back? Well, you, I, I think they took a step back last year. They didn't right. make the playoffs, so I, I still they had nine wins. Is that correct? They had yes. they were uh, and a and a tie. They had a tie yes. in there. They're third in the division. That's what I believe. I don't believe that they beat the Ravens or the Browns in the division. Is that – I mean – That's fair. Do you want to do a bet about yeah. whether he, they Top finish above the, those two? Yes, let's do it. Top two in the division. W- yeah? Hmm? Oh. Oh. He's, hesitating. oh. He's a little scared. I have more to lose on this one because I got two spots that they can finish and lose. Do <laughs> you think they're going to win the division? I think they're going to be top two in the division. That's what I've been saying That's for fine. years. <laughs> Water bet. I, That's fine. But as you were talking, I, I, I realized like this so is who, who do you like them more? I like them. I think more they, than I, I, mean, I, I think they beat. I, honestly, I think that they have a good shot of winning the division. Um, I think that they will all teams beat, do right now. Not all teams. <laughs> the Dolphins fans so are you, really you, excited. You don't out like there. the Browns or Ravens to beat them. I don't like the Browns or Ravens to beat them. That's okay. true. Mike, where do they finish? I, well, uh, they finish in the top two of the division. Cool. Who wins the division, Mike? I'll take the Steelers. Okay. Well, I mean, if you believe they're going to surge without AB with James Conner, then it makes sense to have them rank where you do. No doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, I think a lot of what it comes down to is what are the Steelers. Like, if the Steelers win the division and are great and are a 10-plus win team, James Conner had a great year. 
And, uh, so, and I just if he can put up Derrick Henry numbers the way that Dalvin Cook did, <laughs> back to back number one. Yeah. <laughs> and here, <clears throat> my breakdown of the end of the season for James Conner, it was it was a little bit strange, but there's explanations for it. The game against Carolina was a blowout, and he played forty percent of the snaps. He sucked against Jacksonville. I can't, a lot of people did. A lot of people sucked against Jacksonville. Then over, then nearly a hundred yards against Denver. Then he got hurt. I mean, so it's to me, I I'm not going to look at his. Oh, he was running back 16 over that time because there's a lot of wonky things that happened in that that those four weeks. Oh man, Mike, when I when I said the back to back ones on the Dalvin Cook, your eyes were like, <gasps> I'm wrong about something that you were looking at. You were like, oh man, yeah. Just want to call myself out again. Thank you very much. All right, that is it for today's episode, part two of the running backs on tomorrow's show. Don't forget, check out our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Todd Gurley signed jersey. Yesterday went for $68. Oh, a man. Beckett wit the witnessed. Knee. The knee is factoring into his price. A Beckett witnessed autograph. There are hundreds that go daily at pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS when you check out. And, uh, look, we'll talk to you again tomorrow after these preseason games. We'll have some reaction. In the morning. Get ready for Kyler Murray, everybody. Let's go, boys. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, Foot Clan, let me ask you a question. Do the Cowboys have all the pieces in place to make a run in the NFC? Can the Jets challenge the Patriots in the AFC no. only with NFL Game Pass. Do you get every out-of-market preseason game live? Make sure you see all the action tonight and on into the preseason with NFL Game Pass. You can kick off the 2019 NFL season with a seven-day free trial when you sign up now at NFL.com slash fantasy footballers.